Welcome back to the F1 2024 season with here for Singapore Grand Prix reaction. I'm Sagan, and once again, I'm joining my ex Captain AGX. Yeah, we're back together once again. <laughs> yep. Yep. And under this week's Singapore Grand Prix, which happened on the, this weekend. To be fair, um, quite a dull ending to the to this period. Of, well, let's say double header uh, that was uh, Baku and Singapore. Um, at least from my side, I I I know I could have not watched the race and I would be all all fine with it, honestly. Uh, but that's just my point of view. Probably a lot of people feel the same. Um, about this Grand Prix it wasn't very exciting. But there's some things to talk about, definitely. So we'll get to them later on. Um, let's get to the uh, okay. Um, let's get to the spreadsheet. Um, I somehow managed to stop the recording. <laughs> okay, we're back. Uh, I'll merge the two recordings together, so it's fine. Uh, just a little bit of setback. Anyways, we're in the spreadsheet for Singapore Rubber predictions. Um, that was. Ajax Soul video and um, yeah, get to the weekend. Uh, we're in some a little bit of news, uh, mainly the one about Daniel Ricardo. Uh, there are some rumors spreading before the Grand Prix that it might be his last race in F1. Well, uh, it turned out to be pretty pretty likely out of this at this moment because every everyone in the paddock seemed to be having. Their goodbyes uh, to Ricardo. Uh, yep. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I imagine if they would actually want to replace him, why not make this the announcement before the Singapore Grand Prix, so he can actually say say his proper goodbye to the sport. And it's just this is such an awkward leave if he actually is replaced by Lawson for, for Austin. Just very awkward, uh, but yeah, very, very, also very emotional and sad. For Ricardo, definitely, who, uh, from many sources, uh, was supposed to be in a Red Bull uh, come Netherlands, but Liberty Media and uh, wh whoever else stepped in <laughs> for us in the seat. Ricardo's getting dropped, and Red Bull are definitely losing that second spot as the constructors. <laughs> So, uh, you know, especially after this race that uh, we witnessed, um, anyways, yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, that was a brief mention of that. We'll obviously talk about that after, after the prediction, uh, sorry, after the reaction to our predictions as, uh, that segment is after that, um, get to the, into the practice of the Singapore Grand Prix. It was. Pretty much what we expected. Uh, Red Bull on the back foot. Uh, McLaren and Ferrari very strong. Uh, Mercedes even uh, being up there with Russell um, and yeah, late Hamilton struggling a little bit in the practice. Uh, we saw both Red Bulls down in the order in the practices. Looked very, very not good for them. Well, yeah, uh, come qualifying, it was, well, at least on one side of the garage, it was a different story. Um, Sorry, go with Q1. Was it the one I'm remembering? Uh, Perez was out in Q2, right? <laughs> so, uh, so, so I'm not, so, yeah, so I'm not mistaken. It, uh, yeah, Q1 was, I think, the typical exits, if I remember correctly. So, the two Sauber cars, uh, I think Gasly and uh, Ricardo, who, who unfortunately <laughs> was out in Q1, is most likely last race in F1. Um, um, Yep. Yep. Yeah, it seemed like uh, Sonata had the upper hand this weekend. And it, yeah, we, we saw that on, on most weekends uh, this year. And it's it, it's pretty sad to see Ricardo go 
I would like this because he's definitely had some good performances this year. It was just this Grand Prix was Tsunoda's turn to shine, and again, uh, Ricardo was just left behind. Q1, um, Q2 though, uh, well, more exciting, at least for, uh, from many perspectives. So. The, the track evolution was pretty good, uh, sorry, pretty, good, pretty high. Uh, people are improving rapidly. We had like the Williamses and Hasses jumping into the top five, like every single run. And uh, in the end, Perez got out in Q2, uh, all qualified by Max Verstappen by almost a second. That was his best weekend since whoever knows. Like Baku last year, exactly. Like he's always seemed to be good at Baku, but because of Singapore is the it's the standard. It's it's what we we used to. Yep. Uh, Max actually got out in Q2 last year as well, in Singapore. Yeah. Just a... a very bad performance from Perez there. Um, yeah, I, I, at this point, like, if they're getting out Ricardo, I get it. Like, if, he's not, if they're not promoting him to Red Bull, I get it, but why are still keeping Perez there? Like you can, there's such a simple solution: bring Sunoda to the Red Bull team. If he doesn't perform, put him back. Goes to whatever Honda in 2026. Just try Yuki Perez. <laughs> oh my God! I, Yeah, I just, I can't believe it. Uh, yep, uh, Pinto already outqualified both Norris and Perez. Which <laughs> is kind of quite a funny stat. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, uh, Williams cars. I mean, they're they're been pretty quick recently. Uh, Cole Pinto has been very impressive. Uh, up in 12th, I think, right behind Albon, like within a hundred of a second. Yeah, yeah, very impressive from Cole Pinto in this his first free Grand Prix weekends. Six more to go as well. I think. <laughs> oh, that would be amazing, but I, I know, not quite likely at the moment. Um, you know what? If they would put Yuki uh, in in the Red Wolf for next year, for example, and that would mean a vacancy at Toro Russell next to Lawson, right? Yeah. Color Pinto straight in, like it's such a it was such a missed opportunity if it, if he would stay out for. A, for a year out of F1, especially after even even these three performances, I think were like on par with Lawson last year, if not more impressive, uh, considering his experience in Formula One. Um, so I think Lawson had uh, more track time before him. But yeah, uh, just great, great from Colpinto album. Um, I don't know, I don't know. Um, Science coming in next year. Um, do, you, do you fear that Albon could be on a back foot next year compared to Science? Because I'm not saying he's, a, he's he's not good, but Yeah. I do think it's going to 
He was actually pretty quick uh, in his Formula One uh, period. Uh, like he, in twenty fifteen, I think he actually beat Ricardo on points. <laughs> like that Red Bull uh, twenty sixteen didn't go that well. He was replaced by Max, but yeah, uh, so very solid driver. interesting mm, well yeah we're still a couple of months away from start of the next season we still have six races to go and including this one we need to, we need to review um yeah that's, I, think, that's, I think that's it for uh for q2 right like other mentions uh Ocon, Tsunoda, and magnuson got out in q2 as well the usual stuff so q3 and I thought that we were gonna have a battle between Lando and and Charles, but instead uh, it was a one man show. Lando Norris dominated the entire weekend pretty much, uh, and qualifying just amazing, putting on pole position. Uh, but another driver who was extremely impressive this weekend as well, Max Verstappen in P two. We haven't seen him in. In that position for a while, ever since Netherlands, pretty much. Uh, wow. Uh, Potentially. as a whole was rapid on the circuit uh piastri's q2 time actually was good enough for uh p2 and q3 yeah. uh it was yuki in q3 i actually i think i i said i in q2 so that's my bad uh, yeah, it was Stroll. It was Stroll then uh, who got on the Q2 or another driver. I'm just oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh yeah, Q1. So, uh, so another driver that I mentioned in Q1 had to get into Q2, and you can get into Q3, Q3, which I mean, considering Ricardo going out in Q1, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. I mean, I was I was excited. I'm looking like it, it looked like 
Verstappen potentially crossed the line during the yellow flags and didn't lift. But in the end, uh, yeah, it, it, his lap time was leading anyway. And then second run was good enough for P2 anyway. So that didn't matter in the end. But there's still, if you don't yield the lap uh, in, uh, during a yellow flag, basically penalizes you for the race. I think there's a great penalty of like three places or maybe five. Not quite sure. It's It's been in Qatar, for example, uh, in 2021, if you remember. Uh, that's why Gasly got to P2 on the grid. Or if, uh, I think that's how I remember it. Okay. Um, yep. Science crashing, not greatest thing to do uh, <laughs> the Ferrari but yeah but everybody crashes once in a while um so yeah, unfortunately for science Charles not not no comment I think uh well Ferrari having no, tire blankets which don't t uh, heat up the tires so pretty much useless uh good job Ferrari <laughs> um I mean how how did they have a series of good weekends, and then after that, a series of bad weekends. Like this, this never-ending loop of Ferrari things. Like they looked so good in the past few races. Like Charles was on a streak of four podiums, and he missed out on a podium in this race because of that qualifying. Because in the race, it was rapid, especially in the last stint. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, another mention. Okay. Um, you said. You mentioned Hamilton, P3. Uh, coming from that practice, he looked very, very uh, not happy with the car. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we we definitely will. <laughs> I have some too. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, apologies uh, for my my sickness. Um, okay, P five. I think P five was P S three, right? Such a missed opportunity for P S three. Like, he could have gotten himself as a P two, gained another three points for Norris in the championship, but he wasn't there in qualifying this weekend with whatever. Yeah. yeah, it was just unfortunate. Yeah, um, no, not the greatest weekend from a Piastri at that point, uh, but yeah, oh, he has a race in front of him. So, uh, okay. uh, P6, very important to mention, Nico Hulkenberg in P6, and has <laughs> my boy's back. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it was a very good qualifying from uh, Nico and uh, has overall P13 for Magnussen after missing out, uh, in a, missing out a race. Magnussen actually looked pretty close to Hulkenberg. Up until Q2, I think Magnussen just didn't quite put the lap together, which is unfortunate. But hope, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Indeed, he didn't. Um, yeah, very humid, very hot, and uh, very well. The longest race in, on the F1 calendar as well. Uh, not the greatest combo to have in your health, uh, but still not as bad as Qatar last year, I guess. <laughs> That's a whole different kind of uh, hazardous. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, P7 also good uh, important mention Alonso. Very good qualifying and in the race as well. I'll uh, get to that. Um, P8, Yuki. Profited from the two Ferraris having a uh, Ferrari moment, but <laughs> yeah, uh, still a very good a good job to get into Q3 while our teammate is out in Q1. Um, I think they solid, solidified QP's stint over Cardo. Um, pretty much, yeah, this is the final note on their head to head, pretty much, in my opinion. Um, that ended as it 
probably should have. Um, yeah, the, the two Ferraris we mentioned uh, was the car's crash, and Charles didn't have tar blankets for. Uh, no. it, yeah, yeah, one of his laps got lead. I think the second run, which uh, would have put him in a P five or P six, next to Hulkenberg, I think. So there around that point. But yeah, still just two Ferrari things. Um, that's it for qualifying. Get a just the points though we got the point for norris good job <laughs> uh and the p3 for hamilton as well i got a p4 for george russell uh that's a very cheeky point but luckily uh i didn't fall out too badly there uh, i think i got some points in the last race over you not quite sure uh, as i haven't counted them yet uh we had a glitch, well, not a glitch, but I tried to uh, edit the spreadsheet on my phone and kind of ruined all the all the formulas uh, I had. So <laughs> I had to fix that after this race, basically. Um, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, two, two, one for you. Uh, Grand Grand Prix. Well, uh, we're gonna start with the with this race start, obviously. Uh, one of the most exciting things about the entire race. So. We had a lot of drivers uh, going out uh, into the into the dirt or the or the whatever dust that was there. Like 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 five drivers went out of the track in turn one. Um, Lando Norris, in Berta mentioned, finally led after lap one after turn one uh, from his pole position. That's the first time that it happened ever. <laughs> um, Max, a good start from him. Uh, remain in P2. Mercedes pretty much remained where they were as well. Hulkenberg jumped Piastri at the start, but uh, Piastri got him right back on the on the first straight. Uh, I don't think Hulkenberg didn't. I, I don't think he would put much of a fight against the McLaren. Like he he, he, he was he was nice to get McLaren at the start, but I don't think it was necessary to fight him. Like he would just lose in time. So. Smart move to let him buy, I guess, at that point, or maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'm just not knowledgeable. Um, yep. Uh, okay. The most exciting thing about the start, uh, I'm gonna let you go uh, <laughs> to commentate this one. <laughs> hey, that's the first time I've seen it. Yeah. Season and a half. Agreed one indeed. <laughs> Good job. Uh, 
yeah, you mentioned Colpinto not getting points from this race is criminal, uh, indeed. He was undercut by Sergio Perez, <laughs> of all drivers. Perez, like, the one the one race that I didn't want him to get points and he had to get one point from Colpinto after struggling to overtake him in a Red Bull. Uh, even the radio message, like, uh, difficult to overtake, but he's very good, Colpinto. <laughs> like, that was so, so amazing to hear. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I think we both just became a huge fans of him. Uh, and... <laughs> yep, yep, just a perfect, perfect, perfect start to his Formula 1 career. Um, very impressive this race. Um, okay, that's the start mentioned. I think there's nothing else to mention, really. Like, uh, yeah, Alban signs dropping uh, a couple of places. I think I mean, you mentioned that uh, you were talking three drivers, two of them being the future Williams li lineup for next season. <laughs> Ironic, <laughs> yeah, uh, just just uh, yeah, just. Crazy, crazy. Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay, well, let's get through the race uh, quickly because there is not much to talk about. Um, we obviously had everyone on mediums. Uh, not not much overtaking happening at the start, to be fair. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was... There was this Hulkenberg train for half the race. <laughs> he just... Yeah. Ah, uh, what? Okay, I think you want to take that for yourself, but I just wanted to quickly mention that it was such a horrible strategy, in my opinion. Like, what? Even with the what? What, what he said after the uh, after the weekend, pretty much uh, that. He wanted to mediums, but his team wanted to softs instead and put him on softs like this. Uh, I mean, you, you, you can't swear, I guess, because I'm not monetized yet. You didn't do they didn't allow it neither driver. Yeah. 
that's what could have roughly placed it at thirty five. So they basically gone from three four to to five six, roughly the went from four to six. It's uh, yeah. it's just ridiculous. Here's the other one. Twenty seconds down on like twenty five seconds down on George. And like it was like ridiculous forty seconds down on the after. And he's ahead of him. So Yep. Yep. Uh, I think I pretty much agree with everything you said. So uh, I don't think I need to add too much. Uh, I just want to quickly mention that there was another driver on the same strategy. Uh, well, not the same strategy, but a uh, similar. Uh, Daniel Ricciardo starting with a soft as well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, ridiculous I just wanted to well uh, actually Ricardo I want to mention Lee Carf or, or Thor Russell or whatever you call them strategy in the past like this season it's it's horrible but th this race like how, how did they manage to screw both drivers like I get it, Daniel, like, they may try something with him, starting P15, whatever, put him on two-stop, which is an awful strategy in the round of Singapore. But why did Yuki, did you see his strategy? Starting on mediums, going to softs in the middle of the race? Like, I, 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 I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was trying to get my TV, like, what are they doing? Why not put him in a, in a one-stop and so he can fight for points? But no, they're just screwing him up once again. I, I, I don't get it, I don't get it. At that point, like, it, yeah, yeah, at that point in the, in the middle of the race, actually, Daniel was ahead of Yuki, uh, both after one pit stop, both uh, with one pit stop to go. I legit thought that they're gonna pit Ricardo so he could, uh, he stays ahead of Yuki in the end. I legit thought that was gonna happen, but luckily, they they uh, told Daniel to let Yuki through because that would be, that would be like, no, it's just so so unfair to Yuki. His strategy in this whatever race period, ever since he stopped getting consistent points, is just awful. Uh, I'm, I'm speechless. I, that, that's the worst strategy team on the grid by far. And uh, yeah, I just I just don't I just don't get it. Like, like they're making Ferrari look professional, and Mercedes even like you can you can say Mercedes is probably the worst strategy team of the top four teams right now. Like even McLaren uh, are putting in a good performance once in a while with the fastest car. Uh, yeah, I just I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get it. Why why are they having such bad strategies? I don't. I don't think that the, the cars that bad on the to need a two stop around Singapore, where the track position is the most important thing. Uh, I'm just I'm just out of words. I'm just trying... Yep. Yep. Exactly. Uh, moving on uh, from that. Um, I think we can mention uh, Ferrari strategy as well. Uh, Sainz, that was all right. Uh, he got to what, uh, P7 or P6? I think P7 in the end, right? Uh, which is a decent damage limitation considering his start as well, uh, dropping like P12 or P13. Um, good recovery. Charles, um, I don't know. Uh, why did I make him pit so late I, he couldn't even use his tires to catch russell properly like it, it was a few laps away it probably would have gotten him gotten him but in the end i guess Yeah. Yeah. Another strategy I want to mention: uh, Piastri. Oscar Piastri, in my opinion, should have finished second in this race, but 
the, what's the most confusing thing about about his race is why did they praise the strategists for putting on a good strategy while they literally put, they literally cost him a P2. Uh, the, the McLaren was so much quicker than Red Bull in race pace. He sh should have pitted like 10 or 15 laps even earlier and he could have caught Max by the end. Uh, I, I'm just... Why, 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 is, why did he praise the strategies for getting into P3 or taking a Mercedes... Both Mercedes cars... We shouldn't have started in front of me in the first place. Uh, uh, I'm not satisfied with Piastri's weekend. I'm just, I don't know, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm having like, weird feelings. Like, is um, I'm just not not happy with his weekend because I wanted to do well, and this was one of his weaker weekends at the at the team. Honestly, um, yep, they, yep. Yeah, exactly. Like the team needs him to be in P two or even P one. Like he can let P Norris through if they're having those team orders now uh, or whatever. Or they sat in the in the media. Uh, like this one one race where he literally needed to be in P two because the McLaren. I don't think they're gonna be this dominant uh, come Austin and, and onwards because like Rebel are bringing upgrades and they're already fixed. Uh, that the car enough to be in P2 around Singapore with Max. The, all they need to do is have Max in, in podium places up until the end of the season and Norris is not going to win the title. Just, just... They, they need him to be up there, like, consistently. Not not just every once in a while winning a race or whatever. Like, Piastri needs to... Well, to get consistent, basically, he has the he has the speed, he has the race crafts. He just needs the consistency, basically, to match Norris and uh, even beat him next season, for potentially. Yeah, uh, 25 seconds in, in the lead of the Grand Prix. Uh, he just loses concentration and uh, almost almost gets his front wing deleted. Uh, like, that would be pretty embarrassing and probably would have cost him a title and all all that, well, basically all the reputation he has left at this point. Because um, that the, the memes would be incredible. Like They would be all over the place. Like He would be pretty much nicknamed the bottler or Lando no wins or whatever names were uh, he would have everyone slandering him for the rest of his career basically like <laughs> yeah, there are some there are some great uh, slander names like no riff <laughs> that's, that's, that's amazing no no wins was good but now that he has free wins it's kind of I mean I mean no 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 is free wins or like no four wins? I don't even say that. Yep. 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 We, yep. But you're still gonna admit that he drove a, an extremely good weekend, uh, even with those mistakes that ultimately didn't cost him the win. So, in the end, people will look back on on these, but not quite think about the mistakes. But like a few years time, uh, all that's gonna matter is the result, and Norris won the Grand Prix pretty dominantly as well. Um, so yeah, that's what matters. At this point, um, he kept the lead after turn one. So basically created the, the lead that the, he ended up with in the end, in the first stint. The second stint, they were pretty much equal with Max. I think Norris wasn't pushing too much, and Max was 
trying to keep in that uh, window so Norris doesn't doesn't have the time to bid for the fastest lap himself. Uh, Norris himself could get the fastest lap. He had it for a while. Uh, Magnussen then got it, but he got the lap time bleeded, so then it didn't matter. Uh, Norris actually had the, held the fastest lap for quite long until uh, uh, call her whoever at Red Bull to their sister team. Uh, can you compete to Ricardo to get a fastest lap? Oh, of course, of course, of course. And uh, who doesn't get the fastest lap? Of course, it's Daniel Ricardo uh, getting, his, getting the fastest lap in his final race, probably final race of his career. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's not like super super cheating. Uh, I think it's it's all it's all right. I think it's one point. Not probably gonna not matter. Come the uh, come the end of Abu Dhabi, I think uh, I, I don't think Norris has uh, too much of a chance anyway. Uh, so it just solidifies his Max's fourth Travis title. Um, but yeah, may maybe it actually will matter. But it's one point. It's not like three or four or five. Even just one point. Uh, even Abu Dhabi twenty twenty one. Like they were level on points and uh, coming to the final race, and uh, yeah, the, the the differences between points uh, are like always two, three, or even seven, and uh, between P two and uh, P one. So the one point isn't that impactful in the grand scheme of things, anyway. It may just come to the. Sprints. Yeah, free sprints actually. <laughs> Sorry. Yep. Exactly. Uh, I think it's pretty much the same as Raikkonen got in uh, 2021. Like, it's the farewell driver of the day from the fans. And I think Ricardo is a driver who deserves to definitely. Like, 13 seasons in Formula 1, uh, 8 Grand Prix victories, a couple of pole positions, like over 30 podiums. Uh, but he, he has still has a much better well, a uh, statistic record than Norris, for example, who's had the fastest car for half a season now. Like, yeah, Ricardo definitely has a legacy and uh, will always be remembered, I think, in the paddock. And uh, even for the future, uh, like, uh, what we would take for people to forget Ricardo would be like 30 years, maybe. Honestly. So, uh, it's we're still like... There's still people who remember banders between Schumacher and Hacken, for example. Like those those things happened 25 years ago. I still can't imagine the people talking about Ricardo 30 years from now on. So, yeah, definitely a memorable driver. And uh, yep, yeah. <sighs> sad to see him go. But yeah, it's uh, unfortunately what I, what we both kind of predicted at the start of the season. It, to be fair, yeah, because you point, but not. Did it? Oh, I, I meant the most impressive drive, sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, fastest lap. No, it's there, All right? Did he get fifth? Oh, 
oh, oh, oh, oh, my bad, my bad. Sorry, I fucking got four. Or five. I, I, I actually thought George finished on the podium. My bad. Uh, glad, glad you, glad you saw that. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> nah, I, I didn't get any points. Even though, uh, like, my top five doesn't even look that bad. But yeah, just not, 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 not good either. I got four drivers, I think. maybe not, no, just three drivers from the top five in it, but just in the wrong places. Unfortunate. Uh, lazy impressive team. Um, lazy impressive team. Would you give it two? I would honestly put Tarosso, but it's just I, I was, I'm just very angry with the strategy. <laughs> Maybe maybe Alpine also very good child. Yeah. Uh, Mercedes, I don't think they're that's a. I, I still they still. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're angry, but we'll. I don't think they're anywhere near the least impressive team. Still, like they got. All right, uh, least impressive driver, uh, definitely not Max Verstappen. <laughs> I think he's, he's in conversation for uh, the opposite. Uh, least impressive driver stroll. Uh, yeah, it's stroll. Oh, yeah. To be fair, I, I don't expect Perez to be anywhere, anywhere near Max uh, this weekend. I just thought Baku was the same, but I wasn't there to talk about it, obviously. Uh, so you cannot. Uh, you have to trust me. But yeah, from my perspective, I didn't expect Perez to be up there anyway. It has been destroyed by Max for that entire season, apart from the one race in Baku. Uh, other, uh, any other mentions? Like, Daniel, maybe? I don't know. So, uh, Pierre Gasly? Pierre Gasly, maybe? He he was battling the Sauber cars. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, he's not an Alp Alpine, but still, like, Ocon was the better driver this weekend. Yeah, yeah, probably stroll. Like, uh, yeah, I could, yeah, we have to consider as well that the stroll was relatively close to Fernando in the, the recent couple of races as well. Apart from Mon Monza, maybe, but uh, the eagle least impressive driver there as, as well, I think. So, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, okay, I'm not gonna do what I did with the science and spa, I'm gonna give myself a point. Because I, I really desperately need some. <laughs> Is it? It's two, four, four to two. Uh, by the, the points are not calculated right now. Uh, it, yeah. Yeah, um... Most impressive team. Not Ferrari. Definitely not Ferrari and definitely not Mercedes. I think those two teams are other question. Uh, um, Red Bull? It's it's weird to say Red Bull as legit. This this was the one weekend last year that they both got out in Q one. No, 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 sorry, not Q one, Q two. But Max finished in P two against all the circumstances. Uh, uh, maybe McLaren, but they also bottled at one two. Uh, Maybe Haas, or perhaps like yeah, yeah, just probably Red Bull. I guess that's uh, the only team. I, I, I mean, Perez's performances. Is, I, I think down to Perez being Perez. I, 
Like, we're, we're used to we're used to see that gap. I, I I think Red Bull definitely impressed this weekend compared to what we both expected in my opinion. Uh, we, 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 we both didn't even have Max in our top fives. Like that's that says something. Uh, so yeah, most impressive driver. Look, I was so happy with the qualifying because he finally out qualified George Russell, but they had to put him on such a well. Uh, you already uh, explained their strategy, but <laughs> still, just how did how did they? Screw me out of that point, like, oh, come on. Oh my god. He, he was better than we're used to. To be fair, Norris actually would give him give him two, if there wasn't a more impressive driver, in my opinion. Obviously, there are some good shots like Alonso and Hulkenberg, but I think this goes to Max, honestly. I think uh, Max, straight up, most impressive driver. Yeah. We're giving him a most impressive driver for a P2. <laughs> this is crazy. Crazy stuff considering he. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Colo Pinto, also a good good show, definitely. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, how did last week go? Because I, I, don't, I don't even remember who I chosen for the most impressive. I think I give give you like a few drivers that I think that I thought of as a I, I actually scroll down. Yeah. Yeah, by the way, what a contrast between Baku and Singapore. Like the least impressive in Baku and the most impressive in Singapore. That's a bounce back. Uh, if there's one. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh good that they mentioned Russell because it's in our bold external prediction and he indeed uh, crashed during the practice session. Uh, I think I think you unfortunately for me get a point. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I had a few moments during the weekend with the breaks, definitely. Uh, in the end, finished P four ahead of Hamilton. Somehow, uh, well, uh, not somehow, but, uh, because of something and some some people. But yeah, uh, my actual prediction. Um, this is up for interpretation. Uh, obviously, Magnussen had his lap time deleted during the race, which cost him the fastest lap. Uh, maybe could, <laughs> maybe just maybe. I don't know if if it's even worth. Com uh, worth convincing you. Uh, I, I just like straight straight up. Tell me if there if if it's if there's anything, any chance of me convincing you. I. Yeah, but this is up for interpretation. Like he got penalized, in not in the quite the way we expected. <laughs> Uh, I think I, uh, uh, I'm gonna lie. I think I'm gonna look back on the science, the science and spa. Like Norris probably looks back on the Hungary. <laughs> like, oh my god! I, I literally, I literally the land of Norris of this of this prediction series. Uh, uh. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, five to two for for you on this Grand Prix. 
Good job. You're yeah. Did I did I actually like get some over you? Or two. Oh, okay. So from this double header, I'm already down by one. After being down by six, like I think before back you. So on my greatest, um, not my greatest championship. Like yeah, I probably winning this title this year. Uh, so we're both gonna be uh one time world prediction champions, <laughs> whatever we we'll call it. Uh, it's a tight title fight indeed, uh, but yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think I can come back. I just not good at predictions anymore. Yes, they don't come true anymore. I'm, I'm sad, but I guess I'm gonna just keep that in mind. I predicted the Charles Leclerc victory around Monza, which somehow came true. Yeah, so the, to this day, I, I don't know how they like get that right, but uh, I mean, who's to complain? Like, yeah. Um, you get the championship, but I got the Charles Leclerc victory in Monza. <laughs> I'm happy with that. <laughs> okay, uh, do we wrap this up, or will we talk about the? Uh, well, I obviously mentioned the Ricardo thing, but we still haven't mentioned the the Max versus FIA. Uh, yeah, um, wanna wanna take the take the wheel. <laughs> Yep, you did. <laughs> it's just it's such bullshit, honestly. <laughs> what do you mean? These are these are adults with extreme amounts of adrenaline in them, like. Uh, What does that even mean? <laughs> like, what? Uh, yeah. Actually, I want to know, like, how does he surf that? Like, I'm pretty sure he. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Such a such a silly drama and very very unnecessary. But it was it, it, it was it was funny. It was hilarious. Honestly, seeing Max just. 
answering those questions privately with all those uh, reporters around him. <laughs> yeah, it was just, yeah. Like, that's such, yeah, the huge middle finger to FIA and, uh, yep. Uh, uh, MBS, yep. Um, I think a lot of people are just overplaying it. I, I don't think he has a much of a chance to lose it unless McLaren gets a 1-2 every single race, pretty much, because Max is going to be up there. He's, he hasn't finished, like... Yep. Oh, oh my god. I imagine Max would quit F1 because of such a thing. Honestly, he, he has talked about retirement quite a lot. And this might have just brought that uh, into his mind a little bit more. He may actually retire after 28, which would be uh, quite funny as well, because he would be like 30 years old. With, uh, I imagine... Imagine he's gonna be at least a four-time champion at the end of the season, perhaps. Like you know, you know, he may not win the season, but win the next three. Like is, I, uh, yeah. He he likes winning. He likes being the best, and he also likes statistics. Uh, even though he. Uh, doesn't say that too often. Uh, he has, he knows a lot of the stats he actually has. Uh, but it's probably a good feeling that uh, you hold so many records in F1. Um, myself as a stat person, but, uh, I would, I would honestly just feel like think about the stats all the time even while driving. So that's just how it works. But yeah, uh, I think he definitely definitely has a chance to beat even the biggest Lewis Hamilton's records uh, if he sticks around in Formula 1 for long enough. Um, but yeah, it's all up to 2026 if Red Bull manages to get the good car and if Max stays in Red Bull, it's also uh, a variable because yeah, uh, Adrian Newey and Aston Martin may be an a interesting option for Max uh, if Red Bull before don't nail the regulations for 2026. We could we could see Max in 2027 uh, Aston Martin perhaps so you never know. All right. Uh, do you want to talk about Ricardo or uh, do you think I have mentioned the most important things? So, after till the predictions in Austin, basically. Yeah. So we're doing the 2026 travel lineups. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, you're right. Maybe out of time, we'll actually get an announcement uh, from Red Bull. Because, I mean, it's almost a week since the, since the Grand Prix and... Uh, well, four days, but still, you wouldn't expect such an announcement to be way earlier. And this is such a awkward, it's such an awkward time that there's several, some so many politics going on behind the scenes. Because definitely, Ricardo is the main reason the Visa Cash Up RB whatever team is even called that main because the sponsors are there for him mainly. I don't even know what would that team become if Ricardo is actually dropped. If they do the sponsors stay or um so uh, i don't know uh, we'll, we'll see obviously we're still with uh three weeks before kota which is uh i think you remember uh, my favorite circus on the calendar <laughs> so i'm quite excited for it uh the u.s grand prix uh in i think 20th october maybe uh, 
yeah, 20th of October, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's the date. Um, okay. Well, I think this is it for the Singapore Grand Prix reaction. We'll actually have been recording for over an hour, which is a long time for such a boring race in, in itself. But there are some um, interesting bits, at least, uh, and some tr background drama, obviously. But yeah, uh, thank you for listening and watching us uh, once again. Uh, I've been talking and uh, Captain Ajax uh, carried a little bit on this channel. Uh, so uh, huge thanks to him for uh, for those recordings while I was on my vacation. I'm back now and gonna we're gonna produce some content during the break as well. So stay tuned for that. And uh, this is this video is over now. Uh, thank you for being here. And until next time, see ya. <laughs> Don't forget.